Hi, it's Steve from Parts Select. Today we're going to show you how to change the rear drum seal on your dryer, and it's a really easy job. All we're going to need is a number two Phillips screwdriver, a 5 16 nut driver, a small flat blade screwdriver, and a putty knife. Let me show you how we do it. Now before we begin this repair, we will need to disconnect power to the dryer. So if it has a cord on it, simply unplug it. And if it's a hardwire dryer, locate the fuse panel or breaker panel and disconnect the power there. Now in this model that has a lint screen on the top, we're simply going to pull that out first. And then using our Phillips screwdriver, we'll remove the two screws that secure that top to the filter housing. And next we're going to raise that main top. So we'll just pull the whole top forward to disengage the little spring clip on the front. Do the same on the opposite side. And then tilt the main top up and then have something to support that so that it doesn't fall down on you and doesn't tilt back too far. Now next we'll need to disconnect the harness connector to the door switch. So using a small flat blade screwdriver we're just going to go in under the locking tabs on that connector and release them. And one on both sides. And then next we'll remove the two 5 16 screws at the top of that front panel that secure it to the cabinet. And then while supporting that drum, we're just going to pull the front panel slightly forward to disengage it from the opening of the front of the drum. And then we can lift up on the panel to disengage two clips on the bottom. And then lift the front panel off of the dryer and set it aside. Now our next step will be to release the tension on the belt by reaching in on the right hand side here and find the belt. And there will also be an idler pulley there so we're just going to pull that idler pulley to the right and then roll the belt off of the motor pulley. And then using the belt we'll lift up on that drum to support it and pull it through the front opening. Now we'll set the drum on a suitable work surface where we can remove the rear felt and install the new one. Now to remove the old felt, we're just gonna roll that from the inside out and just try to get a putty knife down the outside of that and break that adhesive bond. And once we've peeled some of that away, we may be able to just rip the rest of it off of there, but use some caution, there may be some sharp edges. And once we've got that started, you can just try pulling the rest of it off there. Now with the old felt off of the drum, you can just take a putty knife and gently remove some of the excess adhesive and uh, some of the old felt that was on there. Try not to, uh, to damage the paint any more than we have to. I don't want to give any areas for rust to form. And if need be, you can take some solvent or lacquer thinner and remove any of the excess glue that may interfere with a good bond for the new felt. Once we've got it cleaned up, we need to make sure that it's dry and free of any oily residue, because we will be applying an adhesive and we need to make sure that there's a chance to make a good bond. Now when installing the new felt, you'll note on the back side of it that there is some green stitching along one edge. That will be the edge that will be closer to the center of the drum. If you flip it over, you'll see a folded center piece, and that is going to stay on the outside of the drum so that it will roll over and lay against the drum tight like that so that that fold is pressed right up against the edge. And I recommend stretching that felt around the drum once just to make sure that it's stretched out enough before we start applying any adhesive. And once we've done that, we can take it off and then just run a thin bead of adhesive along the folded edge of the drum. And you can do a little bit at a time if you wish. Okay, so we'll begin by just applying a bit of that adhesive along that lip. You may want to avoid putting too much on at once. And then very carefully line that felt up. And 
And you may need some assistance from somebody to hold portions of that in place as you move along the edge of the drum. Work your way along, again being careful that we don't put too much of that adhesive on. And then very carefully roll that felt into position, making sure that we press it on so that that center fold comes up against the edge of the drum. So just make sure that we have that center seal right up against the lip of that drum. And we're gonna let that sit for a few hours to the adhesive hardens. We'll also wanna make sure that we don't have any adhesive down in this channel. And that's where the drum rollers will run. So if we have any areas like that, we'll wanna peel that adhesive out of there so that it doesn't stick to the drum roll. And then continue to check all the way around that groove Make sure we don't have any in there. While we're waiting for the adhesive to dry on that new felt, we can take this opportunity and clean the lint that may have accumulated in your dryer. So just take a vacuum, clean out all around the motor area, all in these channels in here. Now when installing that idler assembly, we want to make sure that this hook fits into the larger slotted opening. And these two little tabs will fit into the narrower one. So hook that end in and then pivot it down, and the tension of the belt will hold it in place. So as the belt comes around the drum, it will get forced through that opening around the motor pulley, and it will end up looking like that. So simply line that drum up through the opening at the front of the cabinet, and try to position it on the rear drum rollers, Line that belt up as best we can with the old mark on the drum, and then we'll wrap it around the idler pulley and the motor pulley. So while supporting that drum with your shoulder, just pull that belt across the top of the idler pulley, and roll it underneath it. Pull the idler pulley to the right, and that should give you enough slack in the belt to roll it around the motor pulley. And then just rotate it counterclockwise. Make sure that our belt is seat it properly. And then we can use a putty knife to line up the new felt so that we make sure that it's outside of the rear bulkhead. Just try to get the putty knife in underneath a leading edge of that drum. And then just carefully turn it counterclockwise so that the felt will pull out and lay on top of that rear bulkhead. So now we can put the front panel back on. So we'll need to line up these two rectangular holes on the bottom of the front panel with the two clips at the bottom of the cabinet. Now to do that, we're going to need to push the drum back up against the rear bulkhead so that we can fit the front bulkhead into the drum. Make sure we've engaged both hooks and then tilt that front panel into the drum, making sure that it fits snugly. And then we can put the two 5 16 screws to secure that front panel to the cabinet. So with the front panel in place, just support it with your body, and then we'll replace those two 5 16 screws and tighten those securely so that we don't get any rattles. And then reconnect the door switch, making sure that the locking tabs engage on both sides. Now the last thing we'll need to do is to ensure that that rear felt is sitting on the outside lip of the rear bulkhead. So using our putty knife, we're just going to carefully get under one edge of it there, and then we'll rotate that drum counterclockwise, and that will pull the felt up and around that rear bulkhead lip. Give it a full rotation. Next, we'll put the main top back down. So just give a sharp push on both corners to make sure that we engage those tabs at the front. Next, replace the two Phillips screws in the lint filter housing. And use caution when putting these screws in that you don't drop them down into that opening. Reinstall the lint filter. We're ready to reconnect the power and our repair is complete.